Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. In today's episode here, we're going to be taking a look at the electrolyzer as a power plant system. So in order to do this, we're going to use an electrolyzer and door pumps here to super compress the gases in such a way that we can then, you know, circulate the uh, hydrogen up here around into a hydrogen generators to produce more electricity for our base. And then we'll also get a benefit of oxygen and quite a lot of it for the base as well. So we're going to take a look at this experiment right here, which we did once before in a previous video, but now we're going to look at scaling that up so that it produces a lot more power for our base. And it's a very clean option for producing lots and lots of oxygen and power for our base, or at least we'll see it could potentially be a very clean, um, way to make a lot of energy instead of using something like a natural gas generator or a lot of polluted water because all of that stuff requires other gases in order to be processed around to natural gas and then to polluted water and so on and so forth in order to make it you know work this is very very simple in concept in that you put water clean water into the thing give it a little bit of power which isn't much at all and then it then produces more power from itself hydrogen just goes right up here useful for a lot of things. Oxygen, obviously your duplicants breathe that. So the last time we looked at electrolyzers here, I was comparing a door pump system as compared to what it might look like in a normal system where you just kind of have an open atmosphere in the base. And I created a sort of little chart here and it's really comparing apples to oranges. But what we saw here, if we only concern ourselves with the data for the ones I was working with the doors is that we had a continuous you know, increase uh, throughout the entire day of your hydrogen and your oxygen so that those doors just keep pulling more and more of that stuff away. Now, there was many comments that you guys were talking about, you know, ways of it potentially improving how this thing operated. One of them being mostly how the doors operate. So what you can see here is I've kind of altered the arrangement of the automation sequence so that it actually lets the doors open in sequence. So in the previous sequence, these two doors would open at the same time, and then this door would close, and then that door would open, closing that door, then that door would close, and then these two would open again. The idea is that it would create a, an area of two in order for it to create a vacuum. However, I have changed that now through this sort of automation sequence over here, which is very, very simple. And what this does, if I slow it down to normal speed, is that it just walks these doors straight down. So this one and then that one kind of just works as you would expect it to. And this actually works to move gas a little bit faster than the previous system. However, there are advantages to the previous system depending on what you need to do. But the real question here is whether or not, you know, does that increase the productivity of something that we already know? And the other question was, does this over here increase the production that this electrolyzer can make? So I've already done some experiments with this yesterday and I had some problems with the systems. So just to give you an idea of what those problems were, let me go ahead and just run on over to the footage. So the reason that one didn't work and the reason that this one does work is because the arrangement is actually different. So the lighter gases inside of our base like to go up and then to the left. So hydrogen here goes up and it just occupies this entire tile right there. And oxygen can simply not find its way through here once we get a decent amount of hydrogen up there. It just simply gets cut off or deleted maybe inside of the door. And that's just a little bit of oxygen that we're talking about, you know, so it's not like a big, big deal. But ultimately, this keeps this area pure so that we don't have to run a filter. So we can actually save ourselves a little bit of power there, you know, for these pumps. But the big thing is that if you use this arrangement down here, too much oxygen gets built up in this area, even though it has one tile or if you give it two tiles or whatever, too much, too much oxygen gets up here and then you end up deleting a lot of the hydrogen that you're making with the electrolyzer. So these units down here, none of them are self-powering. So at no point do you actually get more power out than what you put in. So it doesn't really work to scale up at all. You know what I mean? It just doesn't work. So once I went back to something that I already knew worked, well, I was able to kind of build these two systems right here. So we can compare this system here as compared to this system over here on the right. Now, there are some different other ideas of maybe using doors in other directions and all of that stuff, but for right now, we're just gonna keep this nice and simple. And I don't think running this any more complicated than what it is is really gonna make us, you know, make anything work any better. However, I decided to kind of experiment with some ideas of scaling this up using the exact same thoughts and process of 
creating basically a gas lock here at the top because we're using our lightest gas up here at the top, giving it only one tile for stuff to pass through. So I used that up here and successfully was able to separate hydrogen from oxygen in this base using, you know, five electrolyzers here. So what we can see here, if we use the overlay, is that hydrogen finds its way, it locks itself in these corners right there, and then the doors pull a vacuum down here, pumping that hydrogen down into the chambers below them. So this allows us to actually scale up quite large, and I'm going to experiment around with just how large we can actually go with this, you know, in a little bit. So for the first experiment, we're going to compare the system over here on the left to the one on the right. The right one has a little bit more space to give the door, you know, more room to work and all of that fun stuff. The idea being that the electrolyzer won't build up enough pressure, or it'll take longer for this electrolyzer to build up enough pressure to overpressurize, right? Because over here it can produce a lot of oxygen, overpressurize for a moment until this door get, becomes open again. So I'm going to return this stuff to a vacuum. We'll just run this one compared to that one for a cycle, and then we'll compare the total results at the end without pumping anything out. Whichever one has more, we know is successful or better than the other. For those of you that haven't seen it, over there on my community tab, I hinted at a new game that I'll be exploring here. Actually, I have two new games that I'm exploring. I've recently purchased RimWorld and Factorio. So I have an episode of Factorio that I'll be uploading here very soon. And we'll also do the same thing for RimWorld. So I'll start with just a vanilla playthrough of those just so I learn the game. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, which one you guys enjoy and which one actually works well for the channel here. So we're coming up on the end of the cycle. Here we go, we're about ready to take a look at the totals. All we have to do is just turn this door off. There we go. This automation loop here using an AND signal or an AND gate here at the very beginning is actually kind of key to keeping these doors closed. Not necessarily, you can use whatever you need to use, but you want to have a switch to where you can turn this off and the door stay closed. Otherwise, you don't want the gases mixing. That would not be a good thing. So we'll let this sit here for a little while, let the gases balance out, and let's see what we have here. In the top left, I have 1,428 grams as compared to 1,233 grams. So more hydrogen on the left. So if I look at the bottom left tile here on the system on the left, it's 29 kilograms of oxygen, and compared to the system on the right, 27.3. So actually more volume over here meant that this ran less often. For whatever reason, the system on the right does not produce as much as the system on the left. So we're going to stick with that. I've actually added another door above this and it doesn't really change the results at all. So this is the system we're going to go with and we're going to scale it up a little bit. All right. So for the next experiment here, I really want to compare this door arrangement, right? Which just uses the one door that's kind of walking down or away from the electrolyzer as compared to the previous sequence that I used where it was like this, both doors are open, then it closes, closes, closes. It's a little bit of a different sequence here. So I wanna compare the results of this one compared to the results of this one to see which door sequence is more efficient. All right, so both of these are primed and ready to go. So there's a bunch of gas inside of here and they're both at maximum pressure. So now I'm going to turn on both of these door sequences at the exact same time. And let's see which one produces more oxygen and hydrogen. If we take a look at the overlay here, looks like we have hydrogen. And so we got a perfect result set up on both of these. That's what I like to see. All right, so here are the results. Comparing the top system here, we have 813 grams compared to 1,040 grams of hydrogen. So a pretty big difference between the top and bottom as far as the hydrogen is concerned. If we look at the oxygen, we have 23.7 kilograms compared to 26.3. So the system down here where the door sequence is a little bit different, where both doors open up and then it walks down, that actually produced more, you know, th that allowed the electrolyzer to run more often, essentially. So that is the sequence we really want to use right there. So I nailed it first try on the last video. So now that we've learned the arrangement for one electrolyzer, well, we could just make a lot of those and they would probably work just fine. However, we could do it maybe a little bit more efficiently if we just put these electrolyzers right next to each other, saving ourselves quite a bit of space. This is a fairly big unit to put inside of your base, but hey, it's producing oxygen and power, so 
I mean, that's a pretty win-win situation, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and vacuum this. So here we go. We'll set this back to zero and do the exact same experiment here as we did previously. Okay, so what I've done here, I've just enabled all of these electrolyzers to kind of run, produce a little bit of gas inside of here. That way everything's primed up and ready to go. So you can see how that hydrogen has found its way right here and right there. So that's pretty good. We have a little bit of oxygen over here. We'd want to run a pump to clean that up, really. Otherwise, it's just going to kind of get stuck down here. So not that you couldn't vacuum that away eventually with a pump, but for right now, I'm just going to use the cell painter just to get rid of that. So one interesting thing about this is that I have two sets of doors here. So these doors will kind of open up here and here, and they'll run through that exact same sequence to where it's, it's creating kind of a double vacuum almost. It's almost moving it twice. Now, I'm not sure it's really creating a double vacuum because not all those doors are opening and then it's walking down sort of thing, but I don't know. That's another one of those ideas of where one door sequence or the other might actually make a pretty big difference in how much we can run inside of this electrolyzer or how much we can get these electrolyzers to run together. All right, so we're at the beginning of the cycle. Here we go. So we're going to turn this on, and this is running the same sequence that we had in the, the upper system here. So not, not the one that was more efficient. This is the one was, that produced a little bit less. So you can see how these doors are moving here. And that's pumping <laughs> mountains of oxygen down here. Look at how much we have. We have. I'm seeing kilograms already. And the hydrogen is also being pumped down here as well. Lots and lots of it is moving, but you can see how these doors are working. You know, maybe if I slow down a little bit, you can see how they're kind of working together. So from a conveyor belt system, this is actually kind of a, a useful arrangement in that these doors work this way. You can convey quite a bit of material that way. So from an automation overlay, this is what that sequence looks like. It's just a buffer gate and then a filter gate and then buffer, filter, buffer, filter. And then, you know, you, you jump off of the middle buffer gate here with a not gate back to the and gate in order to let this sequence run. So that enables and disables that first door, lets it run with a three door sequence like that. So the only difference between this arrangement and the arrangement down here that produced a little bit more is that we just use the and gate here um, and that is one door, so that's your first door, and then off the end of a buffer gate you run the second door with a timer, then use a filter, and then run that off the second buffer off the second buffer down here. So that's the last one. So that allows both of these doors to open at the same time, and then for one to close first, and then the other to close. And then the last one to close and remain closed until the first two are open again and something is closed. If that makes sense. So what we can see here is that some of these are running more than others. It looks like the ones over here on the left are actually running quite a bit more, which is kind of what we'd expect because hydrogen wants to move up into the left, not so much up into the right. Now you could probably play around with the arrangement here, you know, as far as it maybe having a, a pyramid or a slope or something like that. I mean, there's plenty of room for exploration at this point. Let's go ahead and disable this just to see, you know, where we're at with something that is fairly feasible here, which is five electrolyzers. This is like a pretty decent size power plant. It's not ridiculous. It's not enormous, right? Where we have loads of them, but there we go. So if we let this settle out now, we'll see how much we have. All right, so in one cycle right there, Five electrolyzers, look at that, 36.9 kilograms per tile. Whoa. <laughs> and the amount of hydrogen, we have 13.3 over there. And, well, we have a little bit of oxygen that found its way in here. Let me just get rid of that. It's just like a little milligram or something. There we go. So we have eight kilograms of hydrogen over here. Let me do some math and figure out exactly how much we produced. All right, so here are the results for this power plant up here. In one cycle, this thing produced 744 kilograms of oxygen. That's enough for 12 duplicates, or just over 12 duplicates. It also produced 85.2 kilograms of hydrogen. So what's interesting about that is that the ratio between the amount of oxygen produced and the amount of hydrogen produced 
is actually higher than what these electrolyzers say they can do. So it's an eight to one ratio, eight parts oxygen, one part hydrogen. This one is actually 8.7. So that means a little bit of oxygen is actually being deleted from this electrolyzer, which is in our previous system here, the one that we experimented with last time had a 7.1 ratio of oxygen to hydrogen, but this one has an 8.7. I don't even know how you get above that, but there you have it. So I'm not even sure how that's possible, but there you have it. That's some pretty interesting results. So I'm going to go ahead and change the door sequence here and see if running it, you know, with a different door sequence actually makes a difference. So if we slow this down, what we should see is that the doors, you know, they, they close down like that and then they open up too. So it's a little bit different. And what I'm hoping to see is a little bit more oxygen and hydrogen. And maybe that ratio will be a little bit different. All right, so right off the bat, I can tell you that this is not working anywhere near as well. So per tile here, I only have 27 kilograms. In the last experiment, I had 37.2. If we take a look at the hydrogen over here on the left, well, we only have about four kilograms there. Last time we had 13.3 kilograms in that same tile. So this is way, way less than the last one. Even over here on the right, which has 5.2, that previously had eight. So the door arrangement, you know, the sequence here does not scale up like it did from small. So what you actually want to do is, so what's that mean? Well, if you're going to go big, then this is the sequence you want to use. You know, this one right here where the doors walk from top to bottom. If you want to just use one unit, then this is the door sequence you want to use. The reason why one works over the other, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but there you have it. We did the experiment and it's it was a worthwhile experiment to do. One thing worth noting is that it may be trying to delete some of the gas over here with these doors. So one thing I can do is actually get rid of these doors and see how much that alters the results that we already looked at here. So we can run this experiment one more time just without those doors over there. And we'll see how that, if that changes everything or if it doesn't really change anything at all. All right, so let's run this test again, see what happens. Once again, I don't have as much hydrogen over here or on the left, so quite a bit less on the hydrogen front. The oxygen did fare a little bit better this round. However, it's still less than the door sequence moving just like, you know, one door after another. So the other sequence is definitely the right way to go, no matter what. So I think we'll just roll with that. All right, one last experiment here. This time just not using six doors on the left, but the different sequence. We'll see how this works. Honestly, I feel like the doors being closer to the top here have a real advantage over it being a little bit further down. I don't know. I think we have the right sequence. I think this inside of here is probably a pretty good arrangement. Again, there's going to be a lot of different things you could do with this. Now, I know some people are going to talk about the electrolyzer in such a way of like, well, you could flood that a little bit. Well, there's several pieces of equipment you can actually flood a little bit and then kind of, you know, not have to deal with their negative side of the property, such as vents and this electrolyzer here. That's not what I'm talking about here. I think that's more of an exploit. You're really not, I mean, it is, does take a little bit of ingenuity to figure out how to flood that thing. So there's definitely something to that. However, what I'm trying to do is actually use the electrolyzer as it is intended to be used with the maximum pressure thing and how you overcome that, you know, to design your way around it. So that's why I'm doing this number here. There are other ways of doing it, but that's not what this video is about. So for those of you that are reaching for your keyboard to say, oh, well, this is overcomplicated. Well, honestly, it really isn't that complicated to begin with. And that's why I'm not doing it in a different way. So there we have it. There are the results. Things are evening out. We can see here right off the bat, look at that, 18.9 kilograms. That's actually higher. Wow. Uh, but only 6.7 on the right. So we'll see. We'll see if this is actually any different at all. Things may have just gone one direction as compared to the other based on where the doors were or whatever. So that evened out to 36.3, which is less than a kilogram off of the other one, you know, per tile. So instead of 12.4 duplicates, this one can this one only supported 
12.1 duplicant. That may have had to do when I started and stopped the test at some point or another, you know, right? So there's there might just be variance in when I actually did that. So I'm going to say pretty much equal on the oxygen front. I had my numbers mixed up. Okay, so here are the results here for this experiment. 8.7 is actually not as good because there's less oxygen, uh, oxygen up there. So all I did is divide the oxygen by the hydrogen produced. So that is actually a worse result. 8.7 is actually a worse result than 7.1 because what I have down here is 726 uh, kilograms of oxygen, but it produced more hydrogen. So right down here we have a 102 kilograms. So by comparison, that right there is the amount of kilojoules it has in a day. So 819 kilojoules was, you know, you're able to get out of that as compared to 681. In, in terms of watts, that's 1,365 watts. And the previous setup right there with, with six doors was actually 1,136. So that is a better arrangement for five electrolyzers. All right, so now that we know the correct arrangement and the correct sequence here, let's go ahead and start feeding some hydrogen generators and put some pumps down there and really just let this thing run to see what our net result actually is. Don't need to do a bunch of math. We'll just make it for real. Okay, so here's how this experiment is going to run. Down here, I have my pump, and this thing is hooked up to run liquid into all of those electrolyzers. I know exactly how much liquid I have up here at the top, and I also know how much I have below that. So that's 1,000 kilograms right down there, and then 710 above that. So however much that goes down in a single cycle, I'll know how much water that this system is using. So that means all of the water inside of this pipe is already you know, filled up and to maximum pressure. So no big deal there. Both of these atmospheric switches here for the gas pumps now are set to 1,000 grams. So once we're above that, these pumps will turn on and feed that hydrogen directly into one of these generators, which will then produce electricity that is just going to run into the base and whatever. So the report here is showing that nothing should be using power. We did see a little bit of electrolyzers being used as these things were powering up. But at the beginning of the next cycle here, this will end. And that's the only thing inside of this base that's going to use power, which is going to be the electrolyzers, the liquid pump, and the gas pumps. And we'll see if this can keep up with everything and work just fine. Now down here, this could actually be set up to be something like a gas tile or something like that, so the oxygen just flows out. You could potentially have that also run past a radiator so that it's cooled and this is, becomes its own air conditioning unit, you know, because you got hydrogen right there, which is a great, you know, cooling medium for gas and all of that fun stuff. You could do a lot of cool things with this. And so let's go ahead and just make sure that everything's up and ready to go. The first thing you want to do, which, you know, is we would pump a little bit of this oxygen out of here so that we just end up with hydrogen. Nothing but hydrogen over here. All right, so what I'm observing here was, is actually kind of a, I think a problem with trying to run the game a little bit too fast. It's kind of reached a point here where these electrolyzers couldn't really, the gas was like failing to figure out where it was gonna go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, going to leave this nice and open to environment here so I just pump oxygen into the base. And then I'll get another baseline here at the beginning of cycle 80. Which means I'll top off the water and everything. We'll actually see what that report is. Because I was getting some weird results. You know, or, or lower results because it seemed like it was overpressurized quite a bit. You know what? Opening this to atmosphere actually increased production yet again. Check this out. So here's the results for yesterday. I was able to produce 1,048 kilograms of oxygen right there. The amount of power that was produced was 967 kilojoules. Of that, I used 353 kilojoules giving me a net positive of 611 kilojoules. Bam! How about that? So what I'm seeing here is that the results are a little bit different than kind of my synthetic tests were beforehand. So I'm getting a little less power than I thought I was getting, going to get, but I'm also getting more oxygen. So that makes me think that a little bit more 
hydrogen is actually being deleted from the system. The amount of water that was used in a cycle is about 1100 kilograms worth of water. Now I let that run for a little bit longer, so maybe we could just kind of kind of roughly round that off to 1000 kilograms or one tiles worth of water per cycle, which is quite a bit. But to put that into perspective, a water sieve over here can clean 3000 kilograms worth of water per cycle. So that unit alone could actually power 15 electrolyzers if you can run that at 100% right there. So really your only waste here is sand, which is very, very easy to get more of, you know, if you're using just polluted water, which you don't have to. If you have a steam geyser, you could just plumb that in, boom, and take care of it. The one downside, I guess, to using all of these electrolyzers up here is that it does produce oxygen at a higher temperature than everything else. So you can see the temperature that's pumping out of this, you know, as compared to the rest of my base, it's quite a bit higher. So that is 50 degrees Celsius up there. So that's, that's toasty. So it might be worthwhile to actually use like a thermal regulator and kind of put it into this space up here where all of this hydrogen is freely moving past it and cool down either a gas or maybe even use a liquid aqua tuner up there made of a nice conductive material and then create a liquid radiator down here to really cool down that oxygen as it's coming out of your power plant. Those are some interesting ideas there. And we do have the power to run that stuff. So it isn't a huge amount of extra power for your base with just five electrolyzers, but it really comes with that, that extra bonus of, well, in that case, you know, of, of just yesterday right there, that was a thousand 75 kilograms worth of oxygen. So that's enough for almost 18 duplicates right there. So what's this mean for me? Well, right off the bat in my larger bases where I need to have a lot of oxygen for all of my duplicates, kind of like my triple printer challenge, that right there gives me a good option to produce a lot of oxygen and get a little extra power while I'm at it. And it's not just a little bit of power. I mean, that's 600 kilojoules is quite a bit you know, if you're efficient with how you use it. The real neat thing about this is that it's a very clean way to make power with the added benefit of loads and loads of oxygen. However, there are other methods of power production that should be coming to this game here pretty soon. Octo Jones over here has actually been digging through the, the code here. And one of the things that he's seeing here is that there is a potential that we will see a steam generator at some point here that will actually use steam energy to produce power and we'll actually be able to convert liquids like water or polluted water into steam at some point so that might be coming in the next update maybe maybe not i mean we, we don't know until the update actually launches but there is code in the game that supports you know that potentially being in the game so there may be other systems that we can use here there might be a clean way to produce enough energy to run to generate steam to produce a lot more um, power and then maybe that steam then turns back into water just condenses down cools down and you add get a bunch of energy out of it i don't know i tell you what guys let's go ahead and scale this thing up once more to 10 electrolyzers just to see if it even works this is, this is absolute madness. All right. But hey, you know what? You need that power. Let's make it happen. All right, so this is pretty big. However, it's fairly simple and straightforward. I don't think it would be too hard to build this. Look at the overlay. Bam. Looks like it's working pretty good. Might actually get some decent results out of this. All right, so here are the results for this enormous experiment over here. Uh, cycle 83, look at that, oxygen production 1,962 kilojoules, massive amount of oxygen. The amount of liquid it's using up, I'm sure pretty much just doubled, I mean, <laughs> this thing's sucking it down pretty quick. Uh, I didn't really measure that because I, I went somewhere else and came back. Then the, the amount of power it was, that was produced was 943 kilojoules, so it's not as efficient reason I'm thinking that is because the hydrogen in the middle here has a hard time getting all the way over here to the right. I would imagine that a more efficient setup of this 
something of this magnitude would be to have like this gas pump set up somewhere more near the middle and maybe have potentially three of them so you could have you know this little arrangement we have right here this lock you could have that go off to another side and just stick that right in the middle so that the hydrogen is easier to get to these you know these gas pumps and whatnot so less of it gets deleted so that was that cycle right there it still used less energy than it produced so there's still a yield of, of more however it's not as nowhere near as efficient it seems like the larger you scale this up the harder it is to get power out of it so cycle 84 same amount of oxygen same amount of power and about the same and same so it's pretty much just consistent that way so you do get extra power out of it however 10 electrolyzers right next to each other definitely is nowhere near as efficient as just one and that's nowhere near as efficient as you know just like five of them so you can play around with that obviously scaling it up real big isn't necessarily the way to go unless you rearrange things but hey that just leaves it open for more experimenting in the future however i'm out of time so that's all i got for you guys today thank you guys for watching hopefully you guys have found this video somewhat informative or helpful let me know down there in the comment section below if you did uh, if i've earned your subscription then thank you so much for that and thank you to all of my patreon supporters for supporting me and helping this content go live and not have to worry about the whole youtube adpocalypse thing thank you guys so much for your support have a wonderful day stay awesome guys peace brothgar out